Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Have you ever been reading a blog post or something like that, and you start to scroll and see this little progress bar go across the top of the screen? Well, today I'm going to show you how to do that in HTML, CSS, and then some JavaScript. Let's jump right in. Okay, I will leave the link to that code pin in the description, but it's easier just to write in the code editor itself here. Um, so what we're going to do is, first of all, add a little bit of HTML. Now I've got this whole nav bar area here. That's this white area. It's fixed to the top of the page so that when I scroll, it stays uh, all the way up against the top. What I'm going to do is just right next to this nav bar, I'm going to go ahead and add another div with the ID of progress bar. And that's all we're going to do for the HTML. Now, right now, it's not going to show up because we actually have to add some stuff in our CSS. So let's jump in here and right below the nav, I'm going to just grab that ID of progress bar and let's go ahead and add a few things here. So the first thing is let's go ahead and add a height of, let's do like six pixels to this and then we'll do a width. And right now let's do a width of a hundred pixels and then we'll do a background uh, color. And I've got a variable set up here just called dark. And so we'll set it like that. You'll see when I do that immediately it saves and it actually sets the width of this to hundred pixels. If I change this to 200, it goes to 200. So how do we dynamically update this? What we're going to do is use a scroll event in JavaScript and update uh, this width. And we can do that if we use CSS variables. Now you can declare variables anywhere. Usually they're declared on the root or the HTML of the page, but you can just declare them locally here too. And since this variable would only ever be used for the progress bar, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to declare a variable here and we're just going to call it progress. And that's how you set them in CSS, just two dashes. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do. And then for this width, we'll set it just like we did the var of dark. So we'll say the var of progress. So which means if I save, it should go to zero width. Now it's still taking up that height, um, but we're in, it's right below that nav bar. But now let's go ahead and write a little bit of JavaScript so we can update this dynamically. So the first thing we're going to do is jump over here and let's go ahead and add a link tag here, a script tag. So I'll do script src and with Emmet here, expand it. Let's just call this uh, app.js. Now, in order for it to work on the page after the DOM content loaded, loads, I'll need to say defer here, or you can put it at the bottom of your page as well if you prefer to do that. Then let's come over here and let's just add that, so app.js. So let's think about this in steps. All right, first of all, we're going to need to uh, have an event, listen for the scroll, and then when that happens, we want to run a function that compares the total height to the current position on the page. And then we're going to uh, update the progress variable to that total height. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do kind of one after the other, and it won't actually be in this order by the time we're done with it, but let's start up here. We're just gonna say, let's grab the whole document and do an, an event listener on that whole document. And what we're listening for is the event of scroll, and whenever that happens, we're going to go ahead and run a function that we're going to call update progress bar, just like that. And notice I didn't pass in parentheses here. That's because I'm just passing reference to the function and then JavaScript will run it itself. Uh, if I pass those parentheses, I'll actually be manually running it on scroll and uh, we don't want that. Now, even though functions are hoisted, that means they're brought to the top of the document. It's still good practice to go ahead and declare the function first and then reference it. So let's copy this step down here. And uh, then let's go ahead and work on this progress bar. So let's write a function. We're just going to say function. We'll use the function keyword, uh, update progress bar. It doesn't need to take in anything, but now we're going to go ahead and figure out the, the spot on the page that the document is currently at. So we can do that really quickly, actually, by just go ahead and using destructuring and grabbing several things from the document element. So before I do that, actually, let's go ahead and console.log. And we'll just console log document dot document element. When I do that and I save it here and pull up the console over this way, you'll notice that as soon as I scroll, I get the entire HTML document here. Now let's change this to a dir. When I do that, I'll now get the object here that's being called along with every method that lives on this object. What I'm interested in is a few things, and they're all the way down here in the S's. All right. Notice how many things live on this, um, this object. So I want the scroll height, and then I want the scroll top, how far it is from the top. So let's go ahead and grab both of those. And like I said, we're going to just use destructuring to grab them quickly. So we'll say const, and then in 
these curly braces here, I'll say scroll top and then scroll height. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying I want both of these things from the document dot document element, and I want them to be called exactly that. So I'm declaring two variables in that one little line. Next, just for readability's sake, let's go ahead and say let's set out the scroll percent separately, and then we'll change the variable. So the scroll percent is going to be equal to, and here's what we want. We want the scroll top, that's how far it is from the top of the screen, divided by scroll height, so how far down we are, minus the window.inner height, which is a property that lives on the window. And then in order to get it as a percentage, I'm going to multiply it times 100 and then add to this uh, the percent sign, just like that. So if I were to come in here and let's go ahead and grab this here, and then let's console.log it. When I start to scroll, you'll see now I'm getting a percentage, 1.2% down the page, 3.4. When I get all the way to the bottom, it should say 100% all the way down the page. So we've actually now got something we can update that variable with. And all we're going to do is change the width based on this scroll percent that we've calculated. That's this step right here. So let's move this up. So let's go ahead and grab that progress bar, document.query selector. And we're going to grab the ID of progress bar, dot style, and then we'll do dot set property. And the property we're setting is our variable of progress. And what are we going to set it to but our scroll percent that we created. Okay, so when I save this and I start to scroll, you'll see now it just shows right off the top. And then if I scroll back up, it adjusts because every time I'm scrolling, this progress bar is being fired. All right, so that's how you quickly set this up with just a little bit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Again, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab that code. Uh, but try it yourself first to see if you can't re replicate this yourself. All right, thanks so much, and happy coding.